I'm very keen to hear of examples of co-productions that have worked for the broadcasters. I know nearly everything you do, James, is, is a co-production. I am a Norwegian producer. I have a feature-length doc. Help. <laughs> Help me to get uh, an Irish co-production going. Yeah, in, ter in terms of um, uh, getting an Irish co-production going, I mean, obviously, again, co-production is very much about <coughs> relationships between uh, producers uh, initially developing uh, and producing projects. So I, I think one of the things we always uh, recommend to people is that if, if you are somebody with a story, a Norwegian producer, Swedish producer, a uh, uh, person from anywhere, from the United States, from Canada, from uh, any other part of the world, to connect up with uh, a fellow producer in Ireland is probably the best way if you have a story which has legs both in terms of where you're from and legs in terms of where um, the Irish uh, producer might be as well too. Because in the end, co-production is a collaboration of producers and that's the first and most important thing to form that relationship and see how you can work together in relation to developing the project and then ultimately putting it into production. So that's that's what we would say to international producers um, uh, to form that relationship and develop the project on that basis. And then obviously it depends on the story, it depends on uh, whether there are, I mean, there are suitable stories that work. I mean, one that I mentioned because it was, uh, a, I mean, as an example of a, a co-production which the Irish Film Board was involved in, but showing the kind of the strength and depth, the distances we have and can go, was, was a wonderful documentary called Forever Pure, which was uh, screened recently at the Toronto uh, International Film Festival, which is an Irish co-production, but actually is about a football team in Jerusalem. And aside from the Irish co-producer, who I presume is a minority co-producer, were there any other Irish creative talent? Yeah, oh, there were various Irish creative people involved, okay. music, um, uh, other creative elements were involved, post-production. So it w in that sense, mm -hmm. there was a significant Irish contribution to the project. Okay, thanks. Um, a lot of the other three members of the panel, a lot of their... Um, paperwork, for want of a better word, will state we're looking for Irish stories and indigenous stories that can communicate with an Irish audience. Um, if I have a project that's not set in Ireland and I want to come to a broadcaster, uh, any hints, please? Any tips? I'm, 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 I'm either of you guys. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, I think it's... It, it's I mean, as the national broadcaster, I think that, that the, the word there, national, is, is where is the emphasis, you know, um, with money at a premium, with slots at a premium. It's how can I make the best case possible? We, we, we I mean, we do do stuff, um, and, and, and there is that very, very interesting um, subgenre in sound and vision of the Irish experience abroad, you know. That's true, yeah. um, but again, it's, it, it's the Irish experience abroad in, in, in little letters. Um, I've got a couple that, you know, I mean, we, we're doing um, our big piece for, for, for the turn of the year and into next year with James's um, A Sequel to Close to Evil, Jerry Gregg's documentary yeah. with Tommy Reckenthal, yeah. where um, we go back and we reopen that story in order to just close it definitively, but find a Europe that has absolutely changed even in the five years since we were there doing Close to Evil, you know. Yeah. Um, and it's a Europe that's far closer to Tommy Reichenthal's experience in Slovakia as a seven-year-old boy before he was taken to Bergen-Belsen. It's way that, 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 that this is what he is feeling now as a man 80 years on coming towards the end of his life, you know. Um, and that's one, I think, where we, what was terrific was, again, in terms of the way that was administered, that was a conversation, a three-way conversation between Mary Callery, Jerry Gregg, and myself, where we actually said, "Is you know, this is a project that actually has way more of an international cinematic ambition about it. Let's yeah. let's see how it goes. We never know how these things are going to go, but what we do know is that we have a really, really premium piece of real estate for an Irish audience, irrespective of the international pickup." Um, what the board will do and what Mary will do specifically there is she will get it away to an international it is an international global story yeah. um, and, and again you know I mean uh, it is difficult um, you know myself and, and Prunchies were at um, Sunnyside this year we were both kind of pitching um, <coughs> I, was, I, I was pitching a science um, a formatted science um, um, piece with one of the, the Dublin independent companies and 
uh, we, we are at some stage in the next 18 months going to put that into production, but we will be doing a version of that for SVT and we will be doing a version for ZDF. I mean, out, arising out of that sort of pitch over 10 minutes in that room, uh, it was a story that, okay, the, the, the primal format was an Irish one, but the way we skinned the pitch was actually with an international bent. So we're kind of, you know, sort of, it is, it's something that can be turned around where the Irish, for specific bespoke European audiences primarily, but because all of the mechanical pieces are the same, irrespective of whether it's produced in Sweden or it's produced in Germany, it, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, good. And it, that was funded through education, Close to Evil, the original, was it? C Close to Evil was um, funded through education, yeah. yeah. It's kind of interesting in terms of when you're trying to pitch something, uh, it's not education with a big E, if that's such a it, word. It, it, you can, it's a, it's a Close to Evil is a very, very interesting... Very creative documentary, but there's always different ways of skinning that cat as an applicant. It but it's, a, to it's, be it, straight it, it's a very, very interesting case study, and I, and I, I, you know, because it had just been rejected wrongly around RT, and I think by BI as well. And when I met Jerry Gregg, the producer, um, you know, I mean, it was, you know, I mean, I, 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 what, what I say, and, I, and I'm only being semi-facetious when I say it, any producers that come to me with an idea have already been rejected by about three of my colleagues. You know, it's like, you know, it's like a shelter. You know, and and um, and, and that is what had happened with Close to Evil, and okay. and I did fight the case for him. 